Peter King says the 49ers are the seventh best team in the NFL right now, primarily because Jimmy Garoppolo is coming back from a torn ACL. King believes Garoppolo will play at an MVP level in 2019 and lead the 49ers to the playoffs. Let's take a close look at Garoppolo's film from 2018 and decide if this really is a quarterback on the verge of an MVP season or a quarterback who looks more like a guy with 10 career starts who needs further development and seasoning. I'm only going to look at his film from 2018 for a few reasons. His film from 2017 was impressive, but he had no pressure. He came in at the end of the season when the Niners already were eliminated from playoff contention. 2018, he had real pressure coming in week one, facing the expectations that he's going to lead the 49ers to the playoffs. So more pressure, too. In 2018, he had the entire playbook at his disposal, the entire Kyle Shanahan playbook. 2017, he was using a pared-down version, which featured mostly Patriots passing concepts with the, with the intention of keeping him comfortable and confident. So, comes into this year, 2018, with pressure, the entire playbook, and a full bank account after having signed the richest contract in NFL history at the time. So let's see what all those things did to him in 2018 and what he put on film in terms of his strengths and weaknesses. Let's start with his strengths. And the first strength I always think about with Jimmy Garoppolo is his ability to throw intermediate passes over the middle. He's a machine. When I talk about intermediate, I mean 10 to 12, 20 yards downfield. They're at the 22 here, so 32 to 42 in between these numbers. This is his bread and butter, you'd say. This is what he does best. So it's just a couple of clips of him throwing intermediate passes over the middle and just want you to watch the footwork, the accuracy, the timing, all of it's perfect. Here's his play-action pass. The footwork getting away from center is perfect. Flips his hips real quick, gets his head around, finds Pierre Garçon, steps into the throw, takes a hit, hits Garçon in stride. This is a, I'm going to go, down, go through it one more time because this is a really difficult throw. He has to throw with anticipation. He has to lead the guy across the middle. His, fo his footwork has to be perfect. His accuracy has to be perfect. A lot of guys miss this throw high or behind or lead too far. They don't have the right timing. They don't have the ability to hit a moving target in stride uh, going across the field. Garoppolo does. He makes this look real easy. Look at his footwork. He opens his, opens his feet just a little bit. You don't want to step directly to the target. You want to open up just a little bit so your hand goes to the target. He does all of this in the face of pressure, takes the hit. I mean, he can make this throw all day. Here's a similar play. I want to show you a second clip of Jimmy Garoppolo throwing a nice intermediate pass between the numbers, this time to the left. I showed you before Pierre Garçon on the right running a dig. This is Marquise Goodwin on the left running a dig. Same, same route, a uh, square in, about 12 yards and in. And I just, again, watch the footwork, watch the timing from Jimmy Garoppolo because it's perfect. Here's his target. Steps into the throw, quick release, leads him but not too far. That's a very small window and a nice tough catch by Marquise Goodwin. But, I mean, when it comes to throwing the square in, I have to say Jimmy Garoppolo is as good as anyone. I mean, that's what Tom Brady looks like throwing the square in. That's what Drew Brees looks like throwing the square in. That's what Matt Ryan looks like throwing the square in. That's a hell of a pass, and it's a difficult pass. All right, let's check out more of what Jimmy Garoppolo does well. All right, strength number two, and this one's subtle. Maybe some people would overlook it or not even think it's something big, but if you're talking about the intermediate throws he makes, these, these passes basically here. He also is fantastic on the short, quick throws. And not just over the middle, but outside the numbers too. And not just to the right, but to the left as well. And I, this is something I've looked at for a long time because I covered Colin Kaepernick. And he could make some extremely difficult throws, but he would always struggle throwing to the left. Because those are the hardest throws. You have to open up your hips. You need perfect mechanics. You need to open up your hips and hit, a, again, a moving target in stride moving toward the sideline. Kaepernick would often not open up his hips and he would you'd see him sort of fighting his lead leg, trying to throw around his lead leg and that would lead to cause uh, an all-arm throw. You don't want an all-arm throw, especially going to your left because that's going to end up inaccurate. 
Garoppolo really has perfect mechanics going to the left. These are some simple, quick speed outs, but they don't work unless he th is this precise. And I'll show you what I mean. His favorite target by far is Trent Taylor. He's always looking for Trent Taylor. And because their skill sets match up so well. Taylor runs a quick speed out here. He can throw this all day. Opens his hips, hits him in stride, and gives him a little space to turn up field. I mean, that's perfect. One more time. Watch how he opens up his hips. That's what Kaepernick wouldn't do. Kaepernick would struggle making this throw. And it looks easy, but it's not. And I'm going to show you one more of these. All right, here's another quick throw outside the numbers to the left. This time it's going a good one right here. It's a simple throw, but I like the way Jimmy Garoppolo has mastered the basics on this particular throw. Gets his head around, opens up his hips right there drastically. Goodwin doesn't have much time and space to cut up field, but that's a perfect throw. Okay, so intermediate passes over the middle and short passes everywhere, especially to the left. That's his passing tree, and it's fantastic. Let's check out more of his strengths. So I've shown you Jimmy Garoppolo make nice throws from a stationary platform in the pocket. Now let's watch how he throws rolling out because that's a key feature in the Kyle Shanahan offense, making rollout throws both right and left. Here he is going right. Here he is under center. That's the quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo. Play action. You've seen this play a million times. Fakes the outside zone to the left. Boots back to the right. He's going to go to Kittle here. He makes a nice throw off his back leg. Looks like a shortstop in the hole. Doesn't have time to set his feet. Makes a nice throw. Kittle drops it. Let's look at it from the end zone camera. So you can get a sense of how accurate he is making that difficult throw. He looks like Brandon Crawford right there. Fading toward third base, making the throw back to the first. That's a great throw. Right, here he is against the Chiefs week three. He's in the shotgun in the red zone. This is where the Niners offense struggles the most. This is where Kyle Shanahan's offense struggles the most. And this is where Jimmy Garoppolo has had problems since coming to San Francisco. But he doesn't have problems on this play. check out what he does. Just a straight drop back. This isn't a rollout, not a play action. Doesn't like, do, doesn't feel Breed is open here, so he scrambles out to his left. He's going to find Breed again. And just watch how he makes his throw without setting his feet, moving against the, against, uh, throwing against the momentum of his body. Perfect throw. Now, let's watch it again from the end zone. You get a better sense of his mechanics. Here he goes, right here. Now that's like a shortstop catching the ball, uh, catching a grounder between him and the second baseman, right, right over the second base, catching it in the hole, and then making a snap throw to first base. It's beautiful. Now, time to go to the final, the final area of strength for Jimmy Garoppolo that I identified in 2018. Okay, I'm saving this for last in Jimmy Garoppolo's strengths because it's the flashiest of his strengths and it's probably what you like the most about him without even knowing you like it and it's it's this new buzzword that NFL coaches and NFL people have been talking about the last few years it's called an off platform throw not off schedule but off platform platform means you know your the proper mechanics and setup and footwork in the in the pocket in the pocket being balanced, stepping into the throw, having a bent back foot, having a bent front foot, proper weight transfer, all of that. That's, what you, that's the type of stuff you see from Drew Brees and Tom Brady all the time. From Patrick Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers, you, you see guys who can just flick passes with their wrist and use all arm and still get the ball where they want it to go. It's a, so it's another way of saying sloppy mechanics. Can you still make throws with sloppy mechanics? And Jimmy Garoppolo can. And you've seen it. You saw it in 2017. You saw it at times last season. Here he is. Week one against the Vikings. Let's watch. He's going to have pressure in his face. He's not going to have the luxury or the time to set his feet and make this throw. He's got this guy coming. This guy's open. He's trying to get it to him. And he has to fall away 
take the hit. This is a perfect pass. Kittle drops it. These two didn't have the best connection last season, which was kind of interesting. Again, let's watch it from the end zone. That's not it. Here we go. Go back a little bit. Here we go. Pressure in his face. Can't really step in. Flicks his wrist. Takes the hit. Perfect throw. Deep and outside the numbers. Right there. I mean, that's perfect. Here's another off-platform throw you probably remember. This was his first touchdown pass of the season, 2018. This is an interesting play. He's looking first at the dig across the middle over here. Pettis, and decides that Pettis isn't open, that this guy might get here. So he spins out, starts rolling to his left and giving ground. Can't get all the way to his left. It starts fading backwards. And again, there's no hips. There's no lower legs in that throw. That's, an arm, that's all arm and wrist. And again, that's a perfect throw. So you remember that. Let's look, let's look from the end zone cam. I like looking from the end zone cam. Doesn't have the luxury to set his feet here. Has to make a flip throw. And he does. When he makes throws like that, that's like the highest degree of difficulty a quarterback can, can show. And you understand why the Niners saw a few games of this guy and said, you know what, we got to give him the biggest contract possible. This is our guy. He can make throws that only Aaron Rodgers can make. And we see that. But now it's time to look at his weaknesses. Those are his strengths. Intermediate accuracy over the middle, accuracy throwing quick passes, especially to the left, accuracy rolling out, and off-platform throws. Let's check out the weaknesses. Okay, so I just showed you Jimmy Garoppolo making beautiful off-platform throws. The first weakness I want to point out with Garoppolo is similar to that strength. It's what I would call a lack of patience, poise, and discipline when setting up to throw. So I mentioned it earlier. This whole off-platform thing is a new buzzword. It's a new trend. And it means it's basically a positive way of saying a quarterback who throws with sloppy mechanics. It's a nice feature. It's a, it's a nice feature for a quarterback to have. You want him to be able to make off-platform throws. It's good. But it can quickly lead to a, it can quickly become a bad habit. And I mean, what I mean by that is a quarterback does it when he's under pressure and that's good. A quarterback does it when he has all the time in the world to throw and that's bad. It becomes something he wants to do for whatever reason. Bad habit. He thinks it looks cool. He wants to look like Aaron Rodgers or Patrick Mahomes. Who knows? But this, is, this was one of Jimmy Garoppolo's worst habits in 2018. I'm going to show you a few clips just so you don't think I'm making a mountain out of a molehill and it's just so you can see this is a real trend week one he's in the red zone these are plays the Niners gave away that could have been the difference in the game look 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 let's back this up back it up it's just a simple rollout this is designed to get five ten yards use check is open there's no one around there's no pressure he should be able to easily set his feet and make this throw. But for whatever reason, he does this stuff and misses down and away. Juszczyk has to dive. Can't make the catch. So let's watch it from back here. Like That's just really poor mechanics. That's just a lack of patience and poise. Set your feet. There, set your feet. There's no one around you. Uh, if Drew Brees were running this play, he'd set his feet and make the throw. If Tom Brady... Had to execute this play. He set his feet and make this throw. Aaron Rodgers probably wouldn't set his feet. He could make that throw. But Jimmy Garoppolo isn't Aaron Rodgers. He doesn't have the same arm strength. He doesn't have the same arm talent. Very good arm. Not, not the greatest arm of all time like, like Aaron Rodgers. Set your feet and make this throw, Jimmy. All right, so I just showed you Jimmy Garoppolo being a little lazy rolling out. Had time to set his feet, didn't set his feet. This is going to be... Now I'm going to show you some clips of him being a little bit lazy in the pocket. Here he is. This, is a, this was a famous play. This was the, the, the touchdown pass Garoppolo missed in the red zone that would have had this game close to tied. I mean, they lost by eight. This was six points that he left on the field. And it's all his fault. Kittle's open on this play. And 
Garoppolo is just going to miss him. I'm going to show you exactly how and why. Come on, hurry up, buddy. Hurry up, buddy. Okay, here we go. Here's Kittle. He's going to be open right there. Now watch Garoppolo. Pass sails high and to the right. Now why did the pass sail high and to the right? Watch Garoppolo's feet. The footwork getting away from center, just great. He's set up. He's in great passing posture right here. But I want you to watch his front foot. He's not going to step toward his target like he normally does when he makes a good throw. He's going to sort of take a, he's almost going to step backwards. I call it kind of like a, a hop step or a skip step. And there's no reason to do this. It's bad, it's bad form. You want to throw with your hips and your lower body. When he takes this little step back, skip step, his front leg becomes stiff and straight. And basically what he's doing is taking his legs and lower body out of the throw. It's, it's a total arm throw, wrist throw, the kind of thing you see from Aaron Rodgers. This gets Jimmy Garoppolo in trouble. He, does not, he should not be throwing like this. He should be throwing like Tom Brady, who's always in proper passing posture. Brady doesn't mess around with off-platform throws, whatever that is. Watch his front foot, how it goes up and comes back. Watch his front leg, how it becomes stiff. And how this, what, what the effect, what that does, it makes Garoppolo leave his arm behind him. It's dragging. He's not getting the, the, the optimal weight transfer. So his arm is dragging behind, and that's when he misses high and away. Like a pitcher missing, you know, into the batter's head. Picks the foot up, doesn't really stride into the throw, misses high and away. Let's look at it from the end zone cam. Doesn't step in, high and away. That's on Jimmy. Here's another example of what I call a lack of poise and discipline when setting up to throw. He's going to have time to throw, and instead of using the basic mechanics that he learned in New England, that he's been using his whole life, he uses this little hop step, skip step, step backward, step to the side, uh, stiff front leg, all arm and wrist throw, which is not something that Rich Scangarello taught him. This is all Jimmy Garoppolo. This is him missing another easy throw he should make. Come on, Jimmy. It's an RPO. There's no one around him. Steps backward, misses high and away. And he knows he messed up. Let's watch from the end zone. Take the extra second to use good mechanics. Steps back into the left, misses high and away. You shouldn't miss that throw. One more time. Steps back and to the side. Now he's up on his front leg. He's tippy-toeing. You know what I'm saying? Like he's got this stiff front leg. The legs are out of it, and it's all wrist flick arm. You can't miss this throw. That's a five-yard throw. That's a 10-yard throw. Got to make that. Can make that. Jimmy Garoppolo has <laughs> plenty of talent to hit that throw. That's just lack of discipline. Okay, final example of a lack of patience, poise, and discipline when setting up to throw. This is, again, week two against the Lions. Play action pass. Kittle's going to fake like he's blocking, then release. He's going to be wide open. No one around Garoppolo. No one around him. His feet are in perfect position. He's holding the ball correctly. He, should, he has all the talent in the world to make this throw. Here's George Kittle, here's Jimmy Garoppolo, he's open, he has time, should make this throw. He wants to throw with a little bit of touch. This is where he gets in trouble. Again, doesn't really stride into it, doesn't really have a bent front leg. He's taking his legs out of the throw, trying to throw with touch. And to Jimmy Garoppolo, that means throwing all wrist and all arm. But again, with that, bet, with that lack of bent front, what am I trying to say? <laughs> By not fully striding into the throw by taking that little hop step by keeping his front leg straight he leaves his arm behind him that's the, the theme I'm seeing with him when he misses doesn't step into the throw leaves the arm behind misses high and away that's, there's no reason no reason 
to throw at that form when there's no pressure around you. I understand throwing off platform when you got pressure in your face, but not with a pocket like that. Use the mechanics you learned in New England and you learned from Rich Gangarello. Let's watch from the end zone cam so you can see how much he really missed by. And the thing that I want to say about this, this is not what he learned from Tom Brady. This is not how he learned to play in New England. This is just lack of attention to detail. And the thing about Tom Brady, he's famous for being, he's famous for his attention to detail despite being the, arguably the greatest quarterback of all time. Every offseason, he re-ingrains it into his quarterback DNA. Jimmy Garoppolo did not play like Tom Brady last year. You know, when he puts these, these throws on film, he doesn't make his quarterback coach look good. This is not how Rich Scangarello coached it. What he's saying when he does stuff like this is, I don't need coaching. I know what I'm doing. I'm the highest paid player in the league. So it's, one, I question, is he taking, co did he take coaching in 2018 from the 49ers? Sometimes players stop, take, stop listening when they get paid a lot of money. One thing I do know is that when the Niners traded for him in 2017, when they were negotiating a long-term contract, one thing Jimmy Garoppolo and his agent were considering asking for, this was early on in the process before he even got on the field, was a new quarterback coach. He didn't know Rich Gangarello. He wanted a, a gentleman by the name of Jerry Shaplinsky. Sh this is true. Garoppolo and his agent wanted to get rid of Rich Gangarello and bring in Jerry Shaplinsky, who was the backup quarterback coach for the Patriots. Now, the, the Niners didn't capitulate. They kept Scangarello. Garoppolo comes back in 2018 and puts this stuff on film. Very undisciplined stuff that does not reflect well on Scangarello, which makes me wonder, you know, is, is this his statement to Rich Scangarello? So Scangarello's out now. Niners replace him, and they don't get Jerry Shaplinski. Shaplinski goes from New England to Miami, and now he's the quarterback's coach with the Dolphins under head coach Brian Flores, who also comes from New England. The Niners have a new quarterback coach now, Shane Day. That's the guy Shaplinski replaced. He used to be in Miami. So it'll be interesting to see. Does Jimmy Garoppolo respect Day more? Does he improve his mechanics? It's not even an improvement because we see that Jimmy Garoppolo can, can use good mechanics. It's just more of a consistency issue. Does he take more pride in his mechanics? Does he show more consistency under Shane Day? Because he, the stuff he put on film here last season did not reflect well on Rich Gangarello, and it's certainly not what the Niners were coaching him. It's like he was going rogue, doing his own thing. Guys, I'm the highest paid player in the organization. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. Well, maybe you don't because you had a, you had a, a down season. You were one and two. You only completed 59% of your passes, and now you got a new quarterback's coach. So this is one thing I'm looking at in 2019. What kind of effect will Shane Day have on Jimmy Garoppolo? Because it seems to me that he just tuned out Rich Gangarello. Another thing I noticed when watching Garoppolo's film from 2018, he tends to lock on to his primary receiver, be a little late getting to his second receiver, not the most comfortable going through his progressions, especially in the red zone. This is where the Niners struggle. This is where Garoppolo struggles to. Of all their quarterbacks they've had under Kyle Shanahan, the offense has performed the worst in the red zone with Jimmy Garoppolo as the quarterback, surprisingly. It's not all Garoppolo's fault. The constant in the struggles for the 49ers in the red zone is Kyle Shanahan. But watch how Jimmy locks onto a target and hesitates in the red zone here. He's going to th stare down Kittle the whole way. This is his primary target. Okay. Staring at Kittle, 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 still staring at Kittle, still staring at Kittle. Now he gets sacked. Let's go back. So at this point here, let's back it up even further. At this point here, when he pump fakes and sees it's not there, he needs to stop looking at Kittle and find someone else. Like, look back to the right and see either Pierre Garçon running the slant or this running back running the flat route. One of those two guys are open. Make that throw. you got to get off this read right now. Let's look at it from the, from the end zone. Drops back, peeks at Kittle. Now looks down the middle of the field to freeze this safety. Keep him there. That's good. 
gets back to Kittle and just stares at him. Stares, 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 pump fakes, still stares, still stares, pump fakes again, takes a sack. He looked like a rookie on that play. One theme you'll see when I go through these weaknesses, it's, it's mostly not f- uh, physical limitations. It's inexperience. When I, here, he looked like a guy who's had eight starts in his, in his career, nine starts, because this is his ninth start right here, locking onto the receiver in the red zone. Does it again here. Again, he's in the red zone. He's at about the 17-yard line, the 12-yard line. He's just going to lock onto his, his target. And again, Garoppolo's favorite target on the 49ers is Trent Taylor. Staring him down, sort of a long developing route, and out, coming back to the end. It takes too long. Garoppolo stares at him the whole way. Watch him. Watch his head. Peeks quick to the right so, as he, does, so he doesn't telegraph the throw. But now he's staring at him, staring at him, staring at him, staring at him. Staring at him, staring at him. Gets sacked and, and stripped. He looks like it looks like Madden, where you're playing a guy and he drops the comp- the controller and leaves the room. The quarterback's just standing there. So let's go back to the all 22 view and see where he should have gone. So while Garoppolo is staring at Trent Taylor. Rooting for him to get open. I call this cheerleading a wide receiver. He doesn't see the best receiver on the team, George Kittle, one-on-one open. You know, if he comes back right now, he's got the safety leaning this way. This guy's going to take another second and a half to get open. Give your best receiver a shot. He's got, he's, got a, he's got a step on the defender. This is six points that Jimmy Garoppolo left on the field in 2018 right here. Stop staring down Trent Taylor. Find George Kittle. Get off your first target if, if he's not open in, in two seconds. The ball's out before Trent Taylor even makes his final break. Earlier I showed you how well Garoppolo throws intermediate passes between the numbers. Now, I was specific on mentioning between the numbers because... As good as he is throwing in this area of the field, that's how much he struggles throwing in that area of the field. These are longer throws. You know, you think a throw from here to here is a straight line. A throw from here to here, it's like the hypotenuse on a triangle. You got to get the the Pythagorean theorem out to figure out how long this throw is, but it's longer. So watch what happens when he tries to make this throw outside the numbers. He's going to Pettis up top. Play action. Pettis is going to run a deep comeback because he's not fast enough to beat anyone deep on the outside, of course. This is a good route for him. Garoppolo has time, steps into the throw, and he throws a one-hop sinker. Let's look at it from the end zone. Look, time to throw, steps into it, puts everything he can on the throw, and it sinks, lands about a yard in front. So didn't have the arm strength to make that particular throw. Now here's Garoppolo trying to throw an intermediate pass outside the numbers to the left. I just showed you to the right. He's going to throw to Trent Taylor out here who's going to run a deep comeback. Similar route, left side of the field, similar results. Okay. It's a straight drop back. Trent Taylor's going to take the outside release, come back. Watch Garoppolo up here. He has space in the pocket. He steps into the throw. This is not a wrister. And it's low. He bounces it again. Let's watch it from the end zone view. Hitches into the throw, steps into it, aggressively steps into it, gets the whole body into it, and it dies. Sinker. So, you know, that's okay. Those are the hard those are probably the some of the hardest throws to make. That's when you need A plus velocity, A plus arm strength, and Garoppolo doesn't have it. He has B plus arm strength, which is more than enough. You know, keep him throwing those intermediate passes between the numbers and keep him throwing those short, quick passes to the left, to the right, over the middle. That's a lot of feel that he can hit. You just gotta know that if you're asking him to throw 
intermediate and outside the numbers, that's a dicey throw for him. If throwing ropes outside the numbers 10 yards past the line of scrimmage is one of Jimmy Garoppolo's physical limitations, throwing deep passes is another. I'm not saying he can't do either one. There are examples of him, of him making those throws. The, the, uh, the line drives outside the numbers and the deep passes, but these are things he doesn't do consistently well. The deep pass in particular, this is something everyone knew about him coming out of Eastern Illinois. It's in his NFL.com scouting report. Doesn't throw the deep ball well. Still holds true five years into his NFL career. I'm going to show you some clips. This was his first deep throw of 2018. This is against the Vikings. Play action pass. He's going to have time. He's going to have space to step into the throw. He's going to Dante Pettis here, who gets inside release, is going to run a deep over route. Right now, he's got positioning on the cornerback. Just has to beat him across the field. Here comes the, the break. He's open. He's past the safety. Jimmy Garoppolo just has to lead him. Throw it out here, maybe into the eye, right here. Instead, he underthrows it, allows the corner to catch up, break, break up the pass. That's another six points that Jimmy Garoppolo left on the field. So why did he miss this throw? Let's watch his mechanics. He's in a good pre-passing position. His setup is good. So where is the breakdown here? He's going to want to throw this pass with touch over the top. When he, when he wants to throw touch passes, that's when his mechanics break down. Because to him, throwing a touch pass means doing that little skip step, taking your legs out of the equation and throwing all arm. Doesn't step into the throw, has a stiff front leg, and tries to flick it with his wrist. Watch his, watch his front leg. Doesn't, doesn't step toward the target. Comes up and back. And that's, that's, all, that's all arm. So he, he, he's trying to control the trajectory with his torso and his wrist. And all that does is lead to an underthrow. Here Garoppolo is going to throw a deep pass to, Jim, to Matt Breida running a wheel route up the sideline. And Breida is going to be wide open. Garoppolo is going to have time to make the throw. Watch this. Okay. Here's Brita. I'm going to come around here. His guy is going to get picked a little bit. His back is to the, his back is to the play. He's, Brita's not exactly wide open, but a better pass would have given him a chance. Let's watch where the pass ends up. Let's watch the mechanics too. He has to throw a deep pass. Again, that little hop, skip step and a, and a stiff front leg. This is him trying to throw with touch. All arm. He's going to leave his hand, his arm behind. This is a constant theme with him. I got to throw with touch. Let's take my hips and legs out of the play and just wrist it like I'm Aaron Rodgers. And now he misses high and away. It's a brutal throw. Okay, here we got another deep pass. This one's going to Goodwin. Goodwin is here with the tight split. This is a play the Niners run every game. It's just the play action with the split end running the deep over route. Garoppolo's going to roll out, or he's just going to drop back, and he's going to be he's going to have time to make the throw. Goodwin's going to be wide open. Again, this is a play Garoppolo has to execute every game. This is a staple of the Kyle Shanahan playbook. So not a, not a rollout this time, a straight drop back. But you got Goodwin running the deep over, and he's open. This is against zone. Garoppolo has time. He has space. And uncorks one of the worst passes he's ever thrown. I mean, let's, one more time. All he has to do is put it out anywhere over here. Anywhere. Anywhere. He throws it over here. So not only does he miss five yards too far, but he misses way over the wrong shoulder. Some really, really bad misses on deep passes. This is a similar play from the same game, except this time Garcon's going to run the deep over route. Same play, similar play. Play action, Garcon releases between the right tackle, between the tight end and the, and the right tackle. He's running the deep over. He's open. There's no one around him. Garoppolo has time. Trying to throw the deep pass with touch over the defender. Misses deep. 
every time, almost every time he misses, it's because he takes his lower body out of the throw and tries to arm it, wrist it, and his arm gets caught behind. When he doesn't fully step into the throw, does that little hop step, his arm gets caught behind. He leaves his arm behind. That's an egregious miss. He's too good to be missing passes like that. It's not because he has poor footwork. It's because he has undisciplined footwork. A lot of times he has great footwork. Before he got paid, he had terrific footwork. All of a sudden, these bad habits came out in 2018. Final weakness of Jimmy Garoppolo's game that I perceived watching his film from 2018, his judgment, his decision-making. This one surprised me. When he came from the Patriots, he looked so poised and smart and experienced in those five games with the 49ers, 2017. And we, I think we all just assumed, well, he's coming from the Patriots. It's the best organization. He learned under Tom Brady. This is a guy who, even though he hasn't played very much, he's going to be extremely seasoned and he's going to carry himself like a veteran. That's what we expected last season. That's what Peter King expects this season, 2019. But when you really look at what Jimmy Garoppolo did in 2018, he didn't play like a guy who had been in the Patriots system for five years. He didn't play like a young Tom Brady he showed his inexperience over and over again. And maybe that's to be expected. But I think most people had much higher expectations of Jimmy Garoppolo, whether they were warranted or not. So let's show you him making some bad decisions with his arm and with his legs. First with his arm. This was his ace start of his career, week one, 2018. Third down. He's going to lock onto his primary target, G George Kittle, right here. And throw in a triple coverage. You got bracketed outside and inside with a safety over the top. Throws it anyway. Lucky he's not intercepted. I mean, that's the kind of throw you would understand Josh Rosen making or Sam Darnold. Not a guy who's 27, who's been in the league this long. Although maybe we should expect it from a guy like Garoppolo because, again, he's been in the league a long time. He hasn't played much. It takes a lot of reps in a game before you see everything and these decisions become more second nature. I mean, he's staring at Kittle the whole way. There is no way he should throw this pass. Absolutely not. And then when you go back and look at the All-22 here, watch Goodwin down, down below. I mean, Garoppolo's totally focused on Kittle, but watch Goodwin. Open. You know, not to mention... Trent Taylor. He had options. There's no reason to throw this pass. Rookie decision. Here's another rookie decision Garoppolo made 2018. Late in the game, about a minute 45 left. They're down eight. He needs to lead a drive, lead a touchdown drive, and get the two-point conversion just to tie. So you understand he has to make some tough throws. He has to be a little... He has to take some risks. But this risk he makes here makes no sense. This is like... This one feels like capitulating, throwing away the game. This is not just a rookie decision. I would, this is what I would call a JV decision. This is the kind of thing if a varsity quarterback in high school did this, the coach would be saying, geez, who taught you this? Again, he stares down the guy in the middle of the field. He wants to throw the intermediate pass between the numbers because that's his bread and butter. Forces into triple coverage like I just showed you, and this time he does get intercepted. Now, the last time you understand, you know, it's, he's throwing to George Kittle, he's six foot four. Yeah, he's throwing in a, Garoppolo's throwing in a triple coverage, but maybe Kittle can catch that anyway because he's so tall. There is no chance that Trent Taylor, all five foot seven of them, is going to catch this pass. He's the littlest guy on the field. Doesn't even make a play on it. And you see Garoppolo just sort of says, I'm going to get hit, screw it. I'm throwing it. You can't have a screw it mentality. This is the difference between playing week one with a lot of pressure on the line and playing week 14 when the team's already one in, you know, 12. You, you get these pressure situations and all of a sudden you make these really weird decisions. We didn't see him in a position like this in 2017. All of a sudden, he needs to lead a game-winning drive. He sees a little pressure and makes a JV decision. Was there anyone open on the play? I mean, not necessarily. 
Breida's open right here. How about that? Check the ball down to Breida right here. He's got five yards cushion. This guy's not open. Or throw the ball away. Don't lose the game right here. Throw the ball away. Throw the ball at uh, Breida, whatever. Don't do this. Now, is this a decision that Garoppolo is going to make consistently the rest of his career? Probably not. This is just where he's at right now and where he has to improve from. I just showed you two poor decisions from Jimmy Garoppolo when he, where he pulled the trigger when he shouldn't have. Here's an example of him not pulling the trigger when he should have. This is a mistake he tends to make in the red zone. He becomes a little hesitant. He's a guy who likes throwing to slot receivers like Danny Amendola and Trent Taylor, guys who get open. In the red zone, it's much tougher for guys to get open. So all of a sudden, you see Jimmy Garoppolo holding onto the ball and taking sacks. Saw it a lot last season. Here's an example of that. He wants to throw to George Kittle, but Kittle doesn't get open quickly enough, and he doesn't pull the trigger. Issue with Kittle never really gets open on this play, but he's one-on-one -on -one against a defensive back, and sometimes in the red zone, that's the best you can hope for from an offensive perspective. You might not get someone wide open, but you might get your best target one-on-one -on -one against an inferior defensive back, and in that case, the best quarterback can do is at least give that receiver a chance. Throw it up. It's one-on-one. -on -one. If Kittle doesn't come, up, come down with it, that's on Kittle. If it's intercepted, that's on Kittle. Just give him a chance. Instead, this is what Garoppolo does. So Kittle's going to run and out and up. It's going to take a minute. You've got to stick with him if this, if this is your primary target. Out and up. He comes off him right now before he makes the second look. Now, is Kittle open? Not really. But that's your best receiver. No one's open. Give him a chance one-on-one -on -one instead of doing that. Let's look at it from the end zone angle. And just watch his eyes where he's looking. So he go. He tries to hold the safety. Now he's looking at Kittle. Kittle makes the first out move, looks away. Now he comes back to him, still won't throw it. Instead of giving the guy a chance, he takes a sack. He did that too much in 2018. All right, I just showed you three clips of Jimmy Garoppolo making poor decisions as a passer in the pocket. Now I want to show you three clips of Garoppolo making poor decisions as a scrambler outside of the pocket. This, I think, is, is the real issue. It's, it's more troubling. I mean, the, the decision-making in the pocket, the lack of poise, the uh, footwork, all those accuracy issues I talked about, those are things he can fix. He has shown good footwork in the past. He just needs to be more disciplined and consistent. This is something much deeper. You know, he has suffered two big injuries in the NFL, scrambling. One in New England, one here. He isn't as mobile as he thinks he is. These are plays he could make in Eastern Illinois that he can't make in the NFL. You cannot outrun this linebacker. Maybe you could in college. You can't hear. You need to throw this ball away. Kaepernick would throw it away. Russell Wilson would throw it away. Jimmy Garoppolo ends up on the ground. This is the Niners franchise. This could have been a season-ending injury week two. I mean, this is he was putting himself in bad positions all season. Not just that one game against the Chiefs. This is troubling. This is the kind of thing, it's like, this is RG3 stuff, not protecting yourself. Colin Kaepernick, great scrambler, always protected himself. Russell Wilson, great scam scrambler, always protects himself, never missed a game. This is a guy who runs a five flat 40 who's suffered two serious injuries trying to run. Look at this. Not only does he get tackled, he gets decapitated. This is the 49ers franchise rolling around on the ground. Only has himself to blame. You cannot put the entire 49ers franchise in this position, Jimmy. It's a lot. It's bigger than you. You're not just the backup anymore. You got to protect yourself. The whole season could have blown up right there. Unfortunately, what that was was foreshadowing what was going to happen the next week. Here's another poor decision Jimmy Garoppolo made, scrambling with the ball, and this is another foreshadow of his season-ending injury. This is during the game that he suffered the season-ending injury. Here he is scrambling up the sideline. I want you to watch what he does when he gets near the sideline. This isn't, I mean, it, I, I talk about judgment. This is almost instincts, too. This is why this is so troubling. He needs to get this out of his decision making. He needs to erase this instinct from his DNA. You're, you're a five flat runner, you're not elusive. Get what you can, but now get out of bounds right now. Get out of bounds. Instead, he stays in bounds and takes that hit from 95. And he's on his back. And the Niners' $130 million man 
is picking himself up off the carpet. He's worth too much to the franchise to be taking those these hits. Protect yourself. And you think, well, maybe it's not a big deal. It is a big deal because we know how his season ended. His instinct is to not go out of bounds, to get an extra yard, and to take a hit. What are you doing? Dangerous. This was the final bad decision Jimmy Garoppolo made in 2018, and it was the final play he had because it was the season ender. And it was such a bad decision, it jeopardized his career. Let's watch it again in slow motion and talk about the implications of what he did. He's trying to make a play. The game's on the line. He's bringing his team back on the road. So you admire his competitiveness. But his instincts lead him into trouble. He's got all this space to scramble. That's great. He's going to end up not going out of bounds and trying to put a hit on this defensive back, which is just strange instincts. It's like all of a sudden he became a linebacker. Go out of bounds right now. Instead, he takes a hard cut, blows out his knee, and looks to take a, hit, a head helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit. Could have been a concussion. Just a disaster. When you watch him, when you watch his instincts in these scramble situations, how he doesn't protect himself, how he consistently doesn't protect himself and take big hits he shouldn't, what I wonder is, will he stay healthy long enough to iron out and fix the weaknesses in the rest of his game? Or will he always be hurt? Is this the kind of guy who's going to miss a few games or more than a few games every year? I don't know the answer to that question. You watch him make these decisions as a scrambler, you think, this guy's not going to last long. He's not protecting himself, and his body isn't made for these collisions. Colin Kaepernick protected himself. Russell Wilson protects himself. Jimmy Garoppolo consistently gets hurt when he tries to scramble. He's going to need to scramble less, get out of bounds more frequently, throw the ball away more, protect himself, play more like Tom Brady. He has it in him. He has the skill set. Now he needs to refine his judgment and instincts can you change a 27 year old quarterback's instincts i don't know if he changes his instincts protects himself better respects his quarterback coach respects the basics respects the game more than he sh did in 2018 this guy certainly could become an mvp down the line but the amount of rookie mistakes he's made in 2018 indicates to me a quarterback who is not ready to play like an MVP in 2019, a quarterback who is one of the least experienced starters in the league and plays like it. Nothing wrong with that. But I believe guys like Peter King are getting ahead of themselves with this kid's development.